a quick history of Mari. So Mari was originally created at Weta. Uh, it was a, created as a texture painting asset painting package for uh, Avatar. Um, the big thing they needed to do is they needed a paint package that could paint on um, very, very heavy surfaces, very, very large textures. Uh, Mari can easily handle thousands and thousands of textures on uh, a surface. So uh, another thing, uh, some, some guys over at uh, Bad Robot and some guys over at um, Method, Scott Metzner and um, uh, guys over at Bad Robot, they, they started actually using uh, Nuke and Mari together and they really just really, really liked uh, how they were, you know, how you could actually paint stuff in Mari. So uh, we kind of like balanced ideas back and forth between each other and we kind of took some of those ideas what they were doing very manually uh, between Nuke and Mari and actually put it into a, a little tool set between the two. So uh, it works really great for any kind of cleanup. It really works great for uh, matte painting, uh, stuff like that. Go back to that. So let me actually go into Nuke. Okay. So you'll see inside Nuke that once when the Mari bridge is installed, you'll get a list little Mari menu that shows at the top and a little set of Mari icons. And if I actually go into the project settings, you'll get this little Mari tab that shows up here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and launch Mari with my pretty little Mari button. Let's launch. So as of uh, Mari 1.3 v2, you also get this little Nuke menu that's there by default. So uh, for sending everything you send into Mari, you paint, paint, paint send it back to uh, Nuke. Uh, but Nuke, it doesn't actually come by default. So um, if you actually just go and browse into your Mari folder, Mari bundle, let's see media, scripts, and you'll see inside of this scripts folder, there's actually a Nuke folder. So this is the actual uh, Mari bridge. It's just a uh, Python scripts. So if you do know Python, feel free to modify them and use them for other tools if you want. Um, some people have talked about modifying it to work with Maya or 3D Studio Max. Um, so uh, to really quickly install this, the easiest way to get going is to simply go into your home directory. So users, demo3, and there's this folder in your home directory called .nuke, and it's uh, often hidden, so you can just go up here and just type uh, backslash .nuke, and you'll find that folder, and you can just copy these uh, scripts directly into your .nuke, and that's the simplest way to just quickly get up and going. Uh, there's, there's, more, uh, there's many other different methods uh, if you want to scale this across a, a full studio, and there's actually a full, you know, Nuke to Mari bridge documents that come with Mari. If you just go to the, the help, there's some PDF files and there's a Nuke to Mari bridge. And that'll explain other ways to, you know, get it up and going. But uh, this method is the easiest. And once you launch Nuke, it'll uh, pop up here in the menu. And this works with Nuke uh, 6.2 v4 and above. So even if you're still on the 6.2 train, you can still use the, the connection between the two. So I know about half of you said you already own uh, uh, Mari or uh, have seen it, but I just want to give you a, a, a just a really quick overview, a, a few minutes, uh, so you guys can just get an idea of uh, what it does and stuff like that for those that haven't seen it before. I, I, I've assumed in the past that um, in coming into a new audience that they've seen Mari and then all of a sudden I find out that half of them don't even know what it does. So um got my little snail guy. This is uh, from one of the guys over at Bad Robot. They kindly donated this model. Um, so you can see in Mari we have a ortho view and we have a, a UV view. So if I zoom out. So um, I can paint 
either in the ortho or the UV view. And I can go to my image manager and um, the whole Mari paint system works very much like being inside a, like inside Nuke uh, and using camera projections. But essentially you are uh, live projecting onto surfaces. So essentially I can take an image and uh, essentially this, my viewer is my camera and I'm just moving and scaling this image around and then I'm essentially painting into my buffer and then once an image is actually into the buffer I can take that and I can warp it and change it as much as I want as much as I can and you want to try to get it to fit onto the surface and then you actually hit uh, and you bake the surface it onto the surface and then it's a, that's essentially like rendering to the UVs on the surface. So if I go to the UV view, and that's on the body, go to the shell, there we go. So it's essentially you know, projected down onto the UVs of the surface. And um, Mari is, a, is very UV uh, slash camera projection based so uh, it doesn't like overlapping UVs so you uh, this is a typical layout that uh, people working in uh, Mari will use. They'll uh, lay everything out in zero to one. This is like zero to one right here. Uh, one to two, two to three, or zero to two, zero to three, zero to four, etc. And you can go ten across, and you can go as high as you want in the sky. Um, I've, I have some example models that have 400 textures. It's, it's, they're pretty huge. So th this is the uh, you know idea behind Mari is you can just really really quickly get in and just just paint. It's a, a very simple interface. Um, if you used uh, you know obviously you guys have all used Nuke, so it, it the interface is all customizable and you can move all the GUI around and you know etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, also you can go into the uh, go, you can have many different channels on the surface. So. This one has like AO on the shell, color, diffuse, dirt, displays, normals, etc. on this guy. And I can paint all, all these individual channels and then I can actually merge them together with a shader, uh, kind of similar to you would in Nuke. Uh, so I actually have a displace uh, version, which is the displace is turned up way too high. Texture weight, and bring that guy down. So there we go. So this is a the, one of the new features in one three is the displacement shader. So it's it's live uh, test lighting this model on the fly, and then I have some other shaders. And all these shaders do is essentially uh, take all those different channels and combine them in kind of a layered stack. So example, this uh, beauty normal shader, this has uh, ambient occlusion, displace, dirt, shell color, and they're essentially all stacking them all together in different ways. So um, we, we don't ever take any of the channels and say, oh, this must be a specular, or this must be a, you can name, you can name channels any way you want. So uh, now to get to the actual uh, Nuke to Mari connection, Close, discard. So um, this is a shot right here. I uh, play this guy through. Um, th this is a typical cleanup job that you have to do in uh, in Nuke quite a bit. Um, you have to, you know, do a paint job, remove scaffolding, remove wires, remove rigging, stuff like that. Uh, so this is actually a, a perfect example for working with the, the Nuke to Mari connection. So uh, you see this camera's kind of wobbly and moving all around and you need to patch and paint out this big giant uh, scaffolding that's holding up this bridge. So in this example we've actually uh, used the uh, Nuke uh, camera tracker to actually create a, a camera in here that's moving to match that plate. And then we are, uh, 6.2 introduced a, a actual a tool called a point cloud generator. So uh, instead of 
turning up your uh, point cloud really, really high in the, uh, it, or the number of points in the actual camera tracker up really, really high, uh, we have a separate tool called Point Cloud Generator that generates the, uh, a thick, heavy cloud outside of the camera tracker. Because actually, uh, turning up the number of points in the camera tracker can actually introduce a lot of jitter that you don't actually want. So this actually kind of visualizes that 3D environment. And now I can actually create a piece of geometry to actually patch under that bridge. So what we've done is we've just uh, created a card. And let me turn on headlamp. So we've, we've, we've just created a, a card and kind of shaped it to what that canyon uh, um, is like. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go make a, a frame hold and a, a single frame camera for frame one. And we're going to make one for the last frame, for one of the last frames for frame 80. And we can use uh, those, uh, we can actually take those and project them onto the surface and bring them into Mari. So let me go to this. So the, the Nuke to Mari connection, essentially what I do is I just uh, select my, my project 3D and I select my card. So if I look in it, look at it right here. So I'm going to select those two. And I'm going to say uh, Mari send uh, projection components. So the, the connection essentially tries to, uh, it uses just an intermediate file. Um, the Python scripts just do a, like a handshake between the two. And if I go to Mari, it's going to say fake incoming projections. I'm going to say no. And it's going to ask me what resolution I want the, those to be. So I'm just going to leave it at the default of 2K. Oop. So. Here we go. So now I've taken that and uh, projected it onto the surface in uh, Mari. And it, it took care of the whole handshake between the two applications. I, I didn't have to go into Nuke, export the geometry, export the image, uh, bake it out to EUVs, uh, bake out the camera, etc. So I didn't have to do any of that. Uh, the Nuke to Mari connection essentially took care of that for me. Um, and what it does is it, if I go back into Nuke and I go to the settings, and I go to this little Mari tab right here, you'll see it has this Mari data directory. And essentially what it does is uh, it looks for wherever your, your temp directory is for like your cache and stuff. And it just creates a folder called Mari data. And it writes out this, the, these little temporary files when it's going uh, to Mari. So um, what it does is it takes the geometry and it writes it out uh, an OBJ file. And it takes uh, the camera, the single frame camera, and it writes to, it, to an FBX. And it takes the texture and it writes it to an EXR. So to retain a color consistency between the two, um, it always writes out linear EXRs. So uh, I think this is, I'm just using a JPEG sequence in here. Yes, that's a, just a JPEG sequence. So it's taking that JPEG and converting it to a linear EXR. So now in here, I can go in and now start cleaning up that uh, scaffolding. So, um, really nice things I can do is uh, like this. I can start just patching away at the surface. I can start doing stuff like cloning. So I can, you know, start cloning away to patch onto the uh, patch the water. Um, if I go to the my image manager, I actually have the plate in here, so I could actually grab the plate. Oops, wrong button. I grab that plate, drag it into here, and then I could use that this little patch of water right here as for cleanup. So I can take that guy. 